Welcome to Pig Pods. We give you actionable insight and stories behind real life success wherever you go. Here are your hosts, Angelos and Mo. Welcome to Pig Pods, your success podcast. I'm Angelos. And I'm Mo. Angelos, I'm really excited today that we are discussing management versus leadership which is something I love talking about and is something that we're constantly trying to think about and improve on in our businesses. So let's start off by defining management and leadership. So management is defined as the process of dealing with or controlling things or people. And leadership is defined as the action of leading a group of people or an organisation. So you need both kinds of people in any organisation, but generally leaders need to be at the top and managers in the middle or the bottom, although you need some leadership at every level. Okay, so let's go through, uh, let's go, th- let's break them up and go through firstly how to be a better manager, because like you say, you need both managers and leaders in an organisation, so we'll go through that, and then we can come on to how to be a better leader. So if you're at the top of the organisation or you're in a leadership role or if it's your own business, then maybe you need some, some of those tips there. So let's start with how to be a better manager, if that's what your job entails. Um, and I think the way we like to think about this is think how we, how you would like to be managed. So think back to if you had a job before, or if you're in a job now, um, you might be the manager of people, but you might also probably be managed by someone as well. So the people that you manage, they don't want to be micromanaged, do they? Definitely not. I mean, it, I just want to be left alone yeah. and get on with my work. I don't, don't need... Um, yeah, you, you yeah. want to know you want to know what the remit of your job is. You want to know what the you know the outcomes are, what's expected of you by when, etc. To be communicated to really effectively, so to to understand what you've got to do and by when. But you don't want to be micromanaged as to how you do it. So I think that's a really important one for for, for management especially. You want clear timelines for your work. So again, back to the communication point. You want to know how long are you expected to take doing a certain task, or how long is something you know when is something due in by if it's a bit of work. Um, and you want clear objectives and you want outcomes for the required work that you've got on. And I think the other thing is you want to understand the prioritisation of various types of work. So you're probably not just going to have one thing that you sit there and do all day. You've probably got a load of different things and then new tasks might come in during the day. So to actually understand the prioritisation of those in the business and how your manager uh, has perceived what's more important than, than, than other things... Um, then that lets you actually work on what's most important to the business, right? There's nothing worse than you have five top priority tasks. Which one do you do? And then in the end, you 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 are not going to do the one that is the correct one for yeah. your manager. So if you do need, if there is a little bit of confusion, then seek clarification from your manager. Get yeah. get an idea. What is most important for him mm-hmm. for me to finish? Yeah. Um, and if you are a manager, just make sure you're really clearly communicating prioritization clearly and. Having re- uh, checking in regularly because it changes, doesn't it? As the business kind of business changes, the prioritization of things changes. What's important one week might not be important the next week. Uh, you want some level of autonomy. So if you are being managed, you want some level of, of autonomy. If you're a manager, you should allow some level of autonomy, but you do need a fairly rigid kind of framework within that. I think this is where we're going to talk about the difference between management and leadership. Is leaders probably give a lot a lot a bit of a broader remit for for what needs to be done because they're putting a lot of trust in the in the person but the management it may be more in a role where you have to say you know this needs to be done within this certain time frame and you know that, but there is some level of autonomy that the person can get on and do their own work and i think with management there's an expectation that if they deliver they don't get hassled so sort of back to the autonomy thing you don't want to be hassling them. If you're a manager, you don't want to be hassling them all the time. If they've, uh, as long as they're getting on with the work and uh, you know achieving it in the times that that you've set out, you do, you don't want them to be hass- hassled. And finally, I think um, there's an expectation of some kind of praise or recognition for a good job. And if you're a manager, you should definitely think about that. Um, you know, they say people, a lot of people are motivated more by kind of recognition for the job and and uh, praise than they are like monetary rewards and everyone thinks like oh yeah but it's about the money but actually a lot of the time with monetary incentives it's not the money that 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 gives people the enjoyment it's the hitting a target and the goal and being praised for it and then obviously the money is a nice bonus but actually it's the hitting the target which is the thing 
So if you're in a management role, then make sure you're, even if it's not monetary, you're giving some kind of praise and recognition for a good job. A lesson I learned um, in, in a previous job was that if employees keep leaving, don't necessarily look at the employees, look at their manager. Yeah, yeah that's really norm- good, really Normally that's yeah. where it stems from. So well, you've covered what a manager is, but let's yeah. have a look at how to become a better leader. Okay. So leader we, we know is someone that has to lead, who has to encourage, who has to really push and drive um, people yeah. and, the, and the business. So you want to encourage those um, that you lead um, to come up with ideas. Yeah. Make it an open door mm-hmm. policy to come in even if it's really controversial, or you think it's not necessarily um, going to be adopted, encourage that environment so you have discussion. You don't want a leader who's sitting on an ivory tower just yeah. oblivious to what's going on and within that, the company. And, and I think that's a really good point because the people that are in the teams are going to be closer to the work that's actually happening, they're going to be closer to the customers, the suppliers, and they've probably got a really good idea. You know, Not everything will be a great idea, but they'll probably come up with some gems in terms of how to increase efficiency, how to increase service, to reduce cost. So definitely worth yeah having an open door policy for those kind of ideas. I think this is a really important point, probably the most important point in my view, is lead by example. Yeah. Be in the trenches yeah. with the people. Just because you are the managing director or the CEO of a company, get down there, get dirty, have a look and see what's going on on the shop floor. Have a look and mm-hmm. see what's going on. Interact with customers. Yeah. Get an idea of how the customers feel about your business and then you will know 100% whether the managers who are feeding up information to you are in tune with what the customers are saying. Develop people, invest in them. They are your best asset. Yeah, definitely. People say um, that customers are your best asset. Absolutely not. I say it's the, it's the people that work for you because mm-hmm. they ultimately are the people that are going to be pushing out and saying how great your company is. And definitely, and I think that's, a, that, that's an investment with a great return, right? A great return on investment there because you're going to put money in, you're going to put time in and actually... What you're going to get back is a better level of service, probably more loyalty in the role. Um, they're going to tell more people about it. It's just going to be, you know, it's great. And and you've helped them out, you know, expanding their skills as well. So. Give honest, constructive feedback um, that the managers and the individual employees can use. Don't be too hard on people. Yeah. Um, we call it the shit sandwich, where basically you start off well, you give them the main critical feedback, and then you close saying, yeah. um, you know, this is something that we can monitor, but I think overall you're doing a good job. But, but it's also, it's it's kind of the middle part is, it's bad, but it's, this is how you can do, this is how you can do it better, you know, this is how we can help you. So it's not just saying, oh, you did this wrong, do it better. It's actually saying, look, we understand this is how this happened, but let's try it this way and see if we can work work together to work through it. Absolutely. Yeah. and. Probably the second most important thing that I personally believe that any leader should be doing is communicating the values, Mm. as in how to work, and the vision of the company, effectively the why. I have worked for several companies in the past where the vision wasn't necessarily pushed to the employees, let alone the managers. And people were doing their day-to-day job, but there wasn't a grand vision. Mm. We all weren't behind one vision of where we wanted the company to go. Um, it doesn't necessarily matter whether the, every employee is behind the vision, as long as everyone understands where we're trying to go. What is the one, five, ten year plan for the company? Put that in place and then people will, even, they, even though they may have a rough day or they may, may be sidetracked, they always know we are heading on this course. Yeah, it's really important. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, ask for feedback on you as a leader. Yeah. Get a 360 degree view mm-hmm. of your style, yeah. of your company. Always have that open door policy so anyone can just come in and you know, even if they just want to unload all, all yeah. the bad things, yeah. listen. You don't necessarily have to take it all in, yeah. but just listen and have that open door policy. And I think, I think as well, on when you're leading, you're, we, we talked about micromanaging in, in the management section, but when you're leading, you're much more managing or, or leading on uh, values and high level deliverables. So it's less about how the person is doing the work and you give them a bit more remit to actually do what they need to do to achieve the outcome that you want but you set the outcome and you let them go and, and have their like quite a lot of autonomy and that's a really good leadership trait I think. Also don't stop learning, never stop Definitely. learning yeah. um, and developing yourself. You are the most important asset not only to yourself but also you have the responsibility yeah. of tens if not hundreds of people within your organisation, you are responsible for their livelihood. So you need to make sure that you're constantly operating at the best of your ability. Yeah. You need to make sure that you're being pushed, set ambitious goals. Do you have a mentor? Yeah. No one knows everything. Mm-hmm. You can always learn. Yeah. So it's really important, never stop learning. Yeah. 
Um, so, one, yeah, so I, I was just going to say a really good book that I, that I read on leadership is The Five Levels of Leadership by John C. Maxwell. So uh, in summary, I think everyone should go and read it. It's a really, really good book. But the bottom is kind of the, the very base level is authoritarian. It's like you should do this because, you know, I'm in a higher position than you are. I'm your boss and that's why you should do it. And obviously there's no respect there and that's not that's not leadership and that's why it's at the very bottom. And the top level is, is actually where you get to a point where you're such a good leader that you're developing other leaders. So you're not just leading people, you're actually leading leaders that lead other people and other leaders as well. And that's like the real highest level. Um, and, and that involves all the things that we've mentioned around how to be a better leader. It's kind of getting in the trenches, um, investing in people, giving feedback, taking feedback, all those kind of things. Okay. Uh, one thing, if people aren't quite sure on why they should have an import, uh, a vision for their lives mm. or their company, um, please go back to our previous yeah. pods on how to... Um, develop a vision and the importance of that. So very quickly, Mo, I want to talk to the listeners at home about what I consider to be the best leader ever, Right. in my view. <laughs> and that, for me, is Alexander the Great, um, who is considered by many to be one of the greatest leaders ever and is still taught in military academies across the world, 2,300 years on. So not only at the age of 32 had he conquered most of the known world, bringing with him his Greek stroke Macedonian army far from their homes. He brought down the greatest empire ever known whilst fighting far from home within a matter of a few years. He never lost a battle, of which he had many, many battles, and always led from the front. He was tutored by Aristotle, one of the greatest philosophers ever, and maintained a passion for learning and culture throughout his life. And I just want to share a very quick story about Alexander the Great, um, just to prove the point about how resourceful, how great he was as a leader. So he had a very stubborn town, shall we say, on top mm -hmm. of a mountain, yeah. and the populace of the town wouldn't come down, they wouldn't surrender. Alexander needed to conquer them because it was part mm -hmm. of his, his plan. And this mountain was unscalable. No one had ever scaled it. The townspeople were very confident that they were very safe. Yeah. And they could just bide their time till Alexander got bored and, and went away. But Alexander's not one to, to give up. And so he gathered some men and he encouraged them and said, I want you to scale this unscalable mountain. And I want you to do it not only in these impossible conditions, but I want you to do it at night. Mm. And I want you to climb to the top and I want you to look down on the townspeople and give a signal to show that you have achieved this, um, this goal. And so they clambered up the, the mountain in darkness. They lost 10% of their, their soldiers mm. and they achieved it. And in the morning, Alexander the Great, he told them that we have these men above you. Look above, we have effectively conquered you. And without even a single person dying, except the people who fell sadly to their <laughs> deaths, within the town, mm. um, no one was killed. Wow. There was no battle. It mm. was literally a, a no death um, conquer. And I just think... Sometimes, yes, we can go in there heavy-handed and whatever else, but sometimes just stepping back yeah. as a leader should and just mm. viewing the whole situation, using our brains sometimes yeah. can achieve a lot more um, than just what our gut initial reaction tells so, us. So what do we learn from Alexander? So he led from the front, so, definitely. So yeah. you represent the business, if that's a, put into a business context. You represent the business, you set the standard, and that's absolutely what he did. And you set the, the vision. Yeah. You know, what do I want you to do? Do I yeah. want you to scale a mountain mm -hmm. or do I want you to achieve an extra 20% of sales yeah. this, this year? Yeah. Having great ambition. Uh, why not conquer the world? I mean, obviously, we don't necessarily conquer too many countries these days. But having said that, why not conquer the world with yeah. a great product or a great service? If you have a gift and you want to share it in the world, then why shouldn't you yeah. do it? You owe it to humanity to get it out there. Definitely. And also, also motivating and pushing your your managers, mm. like he did with his generals, to achieve the unachievable. He managed to conquer all of the, most of the known world at the mm. time. And these, these generals were far, far from their, from their homes. They were lonely, they were homesick. Yeah. It was really tough conditions, people were dying. Mm. But he still again and again managed to motivate them. And this is what you need to do, even through the tough times in your company, and you will have them. Yeah. You need to be able to inspire your managers yeah. and keep them going. So. Yeah. Yeah, you know, don't forget that uns unscalable mountain. Yeah, no, that's a really good, yeah, good story. Um, so in summary, leaders develop people, but managers want to control. And actually, like we said, sometimes that's all right. They both have their place in business. Um, but if the, as the leader of your own organisation, you need to display more traits of a leader and probably less of a manager. But we want to know your thoughts and experiences on this topic. So drop us an email on hello at pig.network. 
or get in touch on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. So thank you for listening for App Ed Pods, your success podcast. Click subscribe, leave us a review, and we look forward to your comments in the Pig Pod Facebook community. I've been Angloss. And I've been Mo. See you again on the next exciting Pig Pod. You've been listening to Pig Pods. Click subscribe for more incredible content. More details can be found at www.pig.network.